You crack out of your egg and immediately realize something's eating you. A parasitic isopod the size of a pinhead is chewing through your tail while you're still half stuck in the egg membrane. You thrash free, ripping away from both the egg and the parasite, leaving a chunk of your tail behind. Around you, 99,000 brothers and sisters are hatching. Most of them have the same problem. Some have two parasites. Some are already dead, their tiny bodies hollowed out from the inside. A moray eel larva barely bigger than you shoots through the cloud of hatchlings. Its mouth opens and closes like a tiny guillotine. Six of your siblings disappear in two seconds. It turns toward you. You do the only thing your instincts tell you to do. You go completely limp, spread your fins wide, and let your body go slack. You're not a fish anymore. You're a piece of drifting jellyfish, poisonous and worthless. The eel larvae's eyes pass right over you. That trick just saved your life. You'll need to use it 400 more times before you reach adulthood. Most of your siblings won't make it past day three, but the thing that finally kills you? It'll happen while you're actually winning. Just wait for it. You're five days old and you figured out hunting. Sort of. You've learned that if you hide inside clouds of drifting algae, tiny copepods will swim right past your face. You've caught three today. You're basically a genius. Then you smell it. Blood in the water. Every larval fish instinct in your body screams at you to investigate. You follow the scent trail through the water until you find the source. It's a dying flying fish, twice your size, struggling near the surface. Its wing fin is shredded. It's bleeding out. It's perfect. You're not the only one. Fifty other larvae are already swarming at baby triggerfish, damselfish, wrasses, all tearing off tiny pieces. There's enough food here to last you a week. You dart in and rip off a piece of flesh. It's the biggest meal of your life. Then the water goes dark. A skipjack tuna, three feet long, explodes through the feeding frenzy like a missile. Its mouth opens wide enough to swallow twenty of you at once. You snap into jellyfish mode, fins wide, body limp. You tumble through the chaos. The tuna's mouth passes just beside you. When the water finally clears, thirty larvae are gone. The flying fish is gone. You're alive, but you just learned something terrible. The best meals are always traps. Skip forward six weeks. You have grown and survived the larval stage through a combination of that jellyfish trick and pure luck. You've eaten enough to trigger the next phase of your life. That's when your body starts betraying you. It starts with your eyes. They itch, then they burn, then they start sinking into your skull like they're melting. You try to see, but everything's getting darker. Not because the sun is setting, your eyes are literally dying while you're still using them. You are going to witness how brutal nature can be for you. Your fins start next. The bones inside them begin stretching, growing. It feels like someone's pulling your skeleton apart from the inside. You try to swim normally, but your fins are too long now. They drag behind you like broken wings. The pressure in your head is unbearable. You're diving deeper and deeper, but you can't stop. Something in your brain is forcing you down. At 500 meters, your eyes finish dying. At 1,000 meters, you're completely blind. At 2,000 meters, your swim bladder starts compressing. You're transforming into something that makes no biological sense. Your fins are now three times longer than your body. Your eyes are sealed over bumps. You look like evolution had a mental breakdown. At 4,000 meters, you hit the bottom. The pressure here is insane. You can feel it pressing on every part of your body. The water is 33 degrees, one degree above freezing. Welcome to hell. You'll live here for the next three years, but what's coming next will shock you. You keep trying to swim, forgetting that your fins don't work for swimming anymore. They work for standing. You finally figure out the system. You're a tripod now. Your body hovers one foot off the mud, perfectly still, facing the current. Then you wait, and wait, and wait. After four hours, something tiny drifts past. You can't see it, your eyes are dead, but you feel it through the special nerves in your fins. You angle your fins like satellite dishes, tracking its movement. When it gets close enough, you create a tiny current with your fins, steering it toward your mouth. You snap. You swallow. One microscopic amphipod. 90 calories. You just burned 80 calories catching it. What a joke. You need to catch one of these every two hours just to avoid starving. Down here, there's 99% less food than the surface. Except when something does happen, it tries to kill you. Skip forward three months. You've survived by standing in the exact same spot for weeks at a time. You've perfected the art of doing nothing. Then something lands on your back. It's tiny the size of a grain of sand, but you feel it immediately. A cymathoid isopod, the same kind that tried to eat you as an egg, except this one's smarter. It doesn't kill you. It just stays. It digs its hooks into your skin and starts drinking your blood. Not enough to kill you, just enough to keep you weak. And this guy is going to be an all-night nightmare for your life. You try to scrape it off against the rocks. The rocks are too smooth. You try to swim upside down to shake it loose. You nearly break your fins doing it. You try to reach it with your mouth. Your mouth can't reach your own back. The parasite settles in. It grows. After a month, it's the size of your eye. After six months, you can feel its weight shifting on your back when you move. It's not just drinking your blood anymore, it's laying eggs. Baby isopods hatch on your back and crawl across your body, deciding if you're worth staying on. Three of them decide you are. You've got four parasites now. They drink 10% of every meal you catch. You need to catch more food to feed them, but they're making you weaker, so you catch less food. But you don't die. Not yet. You just get slower, weaker, hungrier. Skip forward eight months. You're standing at your spot, four parasites on your back, barely alive, when you smell something impossible. Another tripod fish. Close. You release your fins, which takes eight seconds now because you're so weak and start walking toward the smell. Your three long fins move like crutches, dragging your body across the mud at five feet per hour. It takes you four hours to travel 20 feet. You find them. Another tripod fish, standing on their three fins, facing the current. They're covered in parasites too. Six of them. They're in worse shape than you. You stand next to them. 
For the first time in eight months, you're not alone. Then you both release your gametes into the water. But here's the twisted part. Your species doesn't do normal reproduction. You were born male. But the stress, the starvation, the parasites, they've been slowly changing your body chemistry. You're becoming female. Except the change isn't complete. You release both sperm and eggs into the water. A confused mess of half-transformed biology. Most of the eggs won't fertilize. Most of the ones that do will hatch into deformed larvae that die within hours. Your partner releases their gametes. Then they walk away. No bonding. No partnership. Just a biological transaction in the dark. You stand there, alone again, and realize you just wasted three weeks of energy on reproduction that probably won't work. Skip forward six months. You haven't eaten in 11 days. Your parasites have eaten most of your muscle mass. You can barely keep your fins stiff enough to stand. Then something massive falls from the darkness above. It crashes into the mud 40 feet away. The impact shakes the ground. The smell hits you like a drug a dead whale. 50 tons of meat. The biggest food source you'll ever encounter in your entire life. You release your fins and start walking. It takes you 9 hours to travel 40 feet. Your fins keep collapsing. You have to stop every 10 minutes to rest. But you keep going because that whale represents 6 months of food. When you finally arrive, the apocalypse has already started. 30 rat tail fish are tearing off chunks the size of your head. Hagfish are burrowing inside, eating from within. Sleeper sharks are circling, taking bites that remove 10 pounds at a time. The water is thick with blood and oil and flesh. You try to get close. A rat tail fish rams you away. You try again. A hagfish coils around your fin and tries to pull you into the carcass to eat you alongside the whale. You barely escape. You stand there, five feet from more food than exists in a cubic mile of ocean, and watch as every other creature feeds. Your three-fin design, the thing that keeps you alive by letting you stand and ambush prey, now makes you the weakest animal at the feast. After three days, the whale is picked clean. You got zero bites. You walk back to your original spot having burned more energy than you gained. You're going to die soon. You can feel it. Skip forward two months. You're standing at your spot. You haven't eaten in 16 days. Your fins are shaking. The parasites on your back have stopped moving. They're dying too, which means you're not even producing enough blood to keep them alive. Then you smell it again. That same tripod fish from before. The one you tried to reproduce with. They walk up next to you. They're in worse shape than you. Three of their parasites have died and are rotting on their back. But they're here. You stand together. Not hunting. Not reproducing. Just standing. Two creatures at the end of their lives. Too weak to do anything but exist next to each other. For five days, you stand together. You catch one meal each. You share the space. You're not alone. On day six, you smell blood. Their blood. A six gill shark, 14 feet long, rises from below. It doesn't attack you. You're too small. Too worthless. It attacks your partner. Its teeth close around them in one clean bite. No struggle. No escape. Just gone. The shark drops their body. It sinks to the mud next to you, torn in half. You can smell your partner's chemistry fading from the water. The shark circles back, checking if you're worth eating. You try to collapse your fins to run, but they won't move. The fluid system is frozen. You're locked in tripod stance, completely helpless. The shark's eye passes six inches from your face. It studies you, decides you're not worth the effort, swims away. You're standing next to your partner's corpse, unable to move, unable to run, unable to do anything but stand there and smell them decompose. Three hours later, your fin system finally releases. You walk away. It takes you six hours to move ten feet. You settle into a new spot. Pump your fins stiff. Face the current. Alone. One week later, your heart stops. Not from an attack. Not from starvation. Your body just gives up. Your fins collapse. You sink to the mud. The parasites on your back crawl off your corpse, looking for a new host. Within two days, amphipods have eaten your eyes. Within a week, nothing remains but your three long fin bones, lying in the mud like fallen radio towers. You survive 99,000 to 1 odds at birth. You figured out the jellyfish trick that saved your life 400 times. You dove 4,000 meters while your body transformed into nightmare architecture. You learned to hunt without eyes in a place where nothing lives. You found a partner twice, lost them twice, and learned that loneliness actually has a taste in the water. You stood alone in darkness for three years, with parasites drinking your blood, waiting with patience that would break any human mind. And you died of nothing. No dramatic attack. No final boss. Just biological collapse. Your body gave up in the dark, and nobody noticed. After all that survival, all that adaptation, all that impossible endurance killed by the simple math of not enough food, too many parasites, and a body design that evolved you into a living trap. But believe it or not, there's an animal with an even worse life than this. Watch that story next.